So in the first uh, couple of problems here, what I want you to do is read the problem and try to figure out, is this talking about a population or is this talking about a sample? And so from by now you should already know what those definitions mean. The population is what you're studying. It's the large group and the sample is the subset that you collect information from. So the first question is, the height of every fourth bottle on an assembly line. The height of every fourth bottle on an assembly line. Do you think that represents a population or do you think that represents a sample? The height of every fourth bottle. So you're measuring the height, measuring the height, but you're only doing it to every fourth bottle. Well, that by definition is referencing a sample. You're not looking at all bottles. See, all bottles in the, in the manufacturing plant would be the population. That's everything if you're measuring the height of all the bottles. But you're not doing that. It says you're looking at the height of every fourth bottle because you don't have time to measure all of them. So you're spot checking every fourth one. You're looking at the sample there. You're taking a sampling along the assembly line. So that's why it's a sample. And the next question, tell me uh, if you think it's a population or a sample. Uh, the ages of all of the United States presidents. So we have, you know, so many presidents, we know their age, the ages that when they were in office, all right? So that's raw data. We can go President 1, President 2, President 3, President 4. We can list all of their ages when they were sworn into office. That's the data. Is this a population or is this a sample? And I would argue that this is a population. Because it's clear that we're talking only about presidents. Presidents would not be a, a representative sampling of any larger group of people. Presidents are pretty special, right? They're very, very special people that eventually get to that position, right? So it doesn't make sense that presidents would be a small subset of some larger group of people. Um, presidents are the important group of people that we, would be, be, that we would be studying and we would want to know their ages. So since that particular population is fairly small, we're able to go in the history books and get the data, and so we would know that the ages of all the presidents there, and that would be uh, rep referencing a population. Specifically, if we calculated their average age or something like that, if we did some calculation with that information, that would be a population parameter, because that would be something that would be describing the population. All right, now in the next problem, what I want to do is want to read it, and then I want you to pull out the different pieces of information in the problem and tell me what is the population and what is the sample based on what we read here. And so let's go ahead and do the first one here. A researcher stops 100 people in a store to ask a survey of household income. A researcher stops 100 people in a store to ask a survey of household income. So my question to you is, what is the sample and what is the uh, population? Let's start with the population. This could be open to interpretation a little bit, but I would argue that the population here is all shoppers in the store, right? And then I would also argue that the sample is 100 people chosen. There's a, you know, there's a little bit of wiggle room in, in how you do this. I mean, the sample is, is rock solid. Nobody could argue anything different than this because the 100 people that you pick is definitely the sample, right? But you could make an argument that the population might be a larger group of people. Like maybe the population is everybody in a city or something like that and you're only focusing on one store. But it would be kind of silly to, to try to study a really large population like everybody in a certain city only by looking at people that shop at Walmart. That doesn't make a lot of sense because you're not looking at a representative sample by just focusing on people that visit one store. It would make a whole lot of more sense that if you're asking 100 people in a specific store, what you're really interested in is the, uh, the average uh, household income of all the shoppers in that store. That would be your population. And from that, you look at 100 people. You know, a typical store, a busy department store, might have thousands or even tens of thousands at Christmas time of people coming through that store every day. It's kind of hard to ask all those people, hey, what's your household income? What's your household income? So you take a smaller sample from that, 100 people, and then you go from there and draw your conclusions. All right, now in the next question, what we want to do is shift gears a little bit. Now remember, we talked about parameters and statistics. Parameters deal with describing the population. Statistics deal with describing the samples, which are our, you know, our little surveys that we do. So the question is, 
the average number of hours per week that a sample of 10 year old uh, 10 year olds spend watching TV is 20 hours the question is of what we've written here what does it represent is it a statistic or is it a parameter and so what I would argue is that for this particular problem we're talking about a statistic which is the, the, the statistic is that 20 hours per week for the sample all right so in this case the answer is a statistic and the statistic is that 20 hours per week is what we have found for our sample. Now, if we go back to the actual problem, it actually says that the average number of hours per week a sample of 10-year-olds spend watching TV is 20 hours. So it kind of gives it away right there in the problem. It talks about the fact that there is a sample. And so we know that statistics are what kind of go along with samples and describe samples. So that's what we have. So when we, re we refer to what we have, the, the data in this problem, it's going to be called a statistic, and that's going to be 20 hours uh, per week for the television. All right, so the last one of these we're going to do just to get a little bit of practice. It says that 87% of all patients in a hospital report having an alcohol problem. 87% of all patients in a hospital report having an alcohol problem. Now there's a little bit of interpretation here depending on how you look at it, but what do you think? Is this a parameter? Is this data here, the 87%, is it a parameter of some population or is it a uh, statistic for some sample? And like I said, it, it's a little bit open to interpretation, but I think the most logical thing would be to say that this 87% number is actually a parameter. So when we say it's a parameter, parameter, when we say it's a parameter, it means that the number here is a, uh, is a descriptive number relative to a population. So the way it's worded here is 87% of all patients in a hospital. So for this particular example and this interpretation here, the most logical thing would be that the population that we're talking about is the population in this hospital. You know, lots of large hospitals have thousands of patients. That's certainly large enough to be considered a population inside of that hospital. And so the 87% number is a parameter, so that goes along with the population. Now, you, you could look at it another way. You could say, well, maybe our population is all patients in all hospitals in North America. And in this case, since we're only looking at one hospital, then this could be a sample of a larger population of multiple hospitals. So there's kind of different ways you could convince yourself that this might be a sample rather than a uh, parameter. But the most logical thing is the way the problem is worded, 87% of all patients in a hospital, the population would be all the patients in the hospital, 87% uh, of them. So that's describing that population. So we call it a parameter. All right, so we are done with this lesson. Uh, again, we're kind of we're kind of cranking through a lot of really important definitions and concepts because in statistics, uh, if you don't understand them, then you're not going to understand any of the problems, and it's going to seem much much harder than it really is. Truth of the matter is that this stuff really isn't very hard at all. We have uh, done some problems with population versus sample. The main thing to take away from it is that populations. Uh, are numbers basically that describe, or I should say populations are the large collection of, of things that we're trying to study and the numbers that describe populations we call them parameters. A sample is a small subset of a population that we are studying or that we're doing a survey or we're taking data from and these statistics are numbers that describe the samples that, we, that we've collected. So that's basically the difference. And these problems are trying to kind of pull that out and give you a little bit of practice with it. And you'll get a lot more practice as we move on. So follow me on to the next section. We will continue building your skills and statistics step by step. And uh, you know, I think you'll find that after a while, none of this stuff is very hard. You just have to really make sure you understand all the concepts in sequence and all the definitions. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.